It's kind of like G-Shock made this one for guys like me. And if you're like me, I think you're going to like this one. This is the G-Shock Range Man, the third generation Range Man, the GPRH 1000. And I am liking it. I've had it, you know, for a few weeks now. I ordered it. I pre-ordered it. And so I got it the week after it dropped. And it's it's just fantastic. It's It's top notch, okay? And just look at the screen. Look at that MIP screen, right? Very legible. And and I made a, a, a YouTube short where, you know, we just looked at, at how acute of an angle you can you can look at that screen and still read it. It's great. It's a terrific screen, big, bold numbers, really clear, really legible, and the the light at night illuminates the face really well and when it senses that it's dark it will automatically turn on when you move the watch okay and one really good feature about the light is that when you press when you turn on the light and you press other buttons the light stays on which isn't the case with other g-shocks which is pretty crazy so why do i feel like they made this one for me well before this range band came out i was uh I was I, I I would wear wear the Mudman to work, the uh, GW ninety five hundred. I work in an oil field, and this watch is insanely durable. Okay, I I tough tested this one, and it just passed every test I flew threw at it. Diesel, uh, motor oil, liquid nitrogen, uh, cats, just like smashing it into things getting it really, really muddy, really, really dirty. And that's the mud man, okay? Now, when I was off work or going to the gym and working out, running, whatever, I would wear the GBDH 2000 because this is a great fitness watch, really, really comfortable. It's like the most comfortable watch I've ever worn. Uh, and, and I enjoyed wearing it for that reason. But it's kind of like... I'm wearing these two watches in tandem, right? Or in series, I guess. Uh, and would there is it possible to make one watch out of these two? Yes. That's what this range man is. Casio G-Shock took the module out of, out of this GPRH-1000, which includes the heart rate monitor, and put it into this ultra-durable body that is mud-resistant, just like the mud man okay and so this thing i'm testing it right now i'm putting it through the same types of tough tests that i did for this mud man and so far so good okay in terms of durability it, it doesn't feel like it's at the exact level of the mud man okay and uh, let me just show you this this band is just really comfortable even though it looks like the mud man Band, this range man band is very pliable where the mud man band is stiffer, okay? And the mud man has these hard plastic wings, which adds to the durability. And these wings on the range man are soft. So this, and and this bezel soft. The whole, the whole front is soft. And I read this article on G-Shock International that, that uh, G-Shock and Espanol had shared that the whole premise of the this bezel being soft and everything being soft on the front is for the rangers in Japan who rescue people at sea or in the mountains when they, they don't want to, they don't, the watch shouldn't damage the equipment or, or their uh, patients, you know, the people they're rescuing. Okay. And so it's, it's soft. Uh, and with that softness, if you look right here at the pin, this pin is big and bold, right? Look at that. That's my primary concern in terms of durability. I mean, uh, I can't, I can't really say if this is a huge problem because just in general, I believe that stuff should bend before it breaks. Okay. And it is a very thick watch. So if you imagine it's on your wrist and it catches something, that flexibility may save the band from breaking, okay? However, just in terms of pure toughness, this one, the Mudman, seems tougher, okay? And uh, 
you know, maybe it's maybe it is flexing a lot underneath the plastic wing when you just can't see it. Okay, but this is very, very tough. I don't want you to watch this review and then think that I'm criticizing the toughness of the range man. I'm not. I'm just pointing out that the this this uh, softness may come at a cost. We'll see. Okay. And I did have reservations about the toughness of the GBDH 2000. Not that it's not a tough watch, but it, I work in an oil field, and so what I wear is subjected to uh, a lot of terrible things like diesel, uh, hydraulic oil, grease, grime, used motor oil, you know, breakfast burrito drippings, all sorts of things that, you know, when you look at the buttons, these are really nice, easy to press buttons on, on the GBDH 2000 which makes it really good for a uh, fitness watch. But the range man has these mud resistant buttons. So there's a whole gasket system in this cylindrical shroud that, that presses the buttons in the module uh, indirectly. So when you press the button, this isn't the button that goes all the way through. There's a whole gasket and cushion system that that presses the button in the inner module okay so the module is what's inside the watch you can think of it as your phone and maybe you put a, a like a phone into a phone case like i do this is like the otter box this this module is in the otter box of a g-shock okay and and these buttons like go through it's it's i think it's a great design in terms of durability or, or excuse me in terms of uh long-term resilience I mean, that's yet to be seen. Uh, however, I have tested it already in a variety of, of materials. Used diesel from a diesel filter, and this is dyed diesel. I drenched it in dyed diesel and checked out the buttons. They worked, and uh, it got really dirty, and there was I made a short where it was crunchy. Like, I had pressed the buttons, and it was crunchy. You could hear the dirt and grime inside the buttons. But when I washed it off, I, I, I took it into the shower with me, cleaned it off, and it just washed right out. Okay, so that's what that mud resist is all about. All right, now the other question that I had was about the optical sensor. You know, my reservation about the GBH 2000 was that would abrasive materials ruin this optical sensor? Or if, if oil got underneath the watch, would it disrupt the uh, function of the heart rate monitor? And in my test with used motor oil from a Detroit diesel engine, okay, that had that had like probably about 500 hours of service life on this oil. Uh, it was actually from the catch basin, so it also had propylene glycol from from uh, antifreeze on it. But I got all over the watch. The buttons worked, and it still got a reading on the heart rate monitor. So this is insanely tough. And remember, when it comes to a toughness of a watch, I mean, it's not like the like watches are breaking all the time at work. It's the, the weak point of any watch is the pins, right? In terms of a blue collar beater watch, the pins pop and, and the watch falls off and you may not even notice. And that's happened to me a bunch of times I, with the Casio calculator watches are, are the worst offenders. You know, I'll, I'll just show you an example in my... Uh, in my G-Shock bag, which I actually I did not order, they put it onto my order. Did not intend to buy it, but it just jumped on. Like this, see these pins? These pins like are the weak point of any watch. And this watch I wore in the oil field for, you know, over a year. You can see how scratched up it is. It's not like the watch broke or anything, but watches like this, the pins pop off. And the reason I retired this one is because the band was starting to break and I thought you know what let's get one of these G-Shocks that they're talking about and the G-Shock that I got my first G-Shock it's right in here it is the King and this is a big watch the first watch that would fit me very big and so the reason I am getting it out is to show you that the range man is about as big as the King it's huge because it has this heart rate monitor and all this additional protection that gives it its toughness and its mud resistance, okay? So the problem with the King is that uh, 
I think it was uh, Jeffrey McMahon said that it's like wearing a LCD TV strapped to your wrist. This is huge. It's called a summer watch because it doesn't fit under your sleeve. If you're wearing long sleeves like I have to, and uh, you have to, I have to wear flame resistant clothing with long sleeves. This watch would not go under the sleeve that easily. But the design of the Range Man allows this body to slip under your sleeve really well for its size. Okay, obviously you need to have room under your sleeve for a watch this big. And my my work sleeves uh, are fine for that. So it's amazing this design. And you know it's the chamfered chamfered edge. They just have enough slope on it, just enough that it can get under your sleeve really well. And so I think that's amazing. And, you know, in terms of legibility, I I have a lot of furious rants about the negative LCD screens. Like you can barely read the this screen. It's negative LCD, it's recessed, it's tiny little numbers. Look at the range, man. Look how big those numbers are. And even though it's a negative screen, this isn't a regular LCD screen. This is what's called a memory and pixel screen. And, and it's terrific. It's, it just looks amazing. So the whole watch is black except for these yellow accents. And, and I just love the appearance. And uh, this is not, not black. This is like a, a, you know, a throwback to the Rangeman GW9400 where you have the metal keeper and the metal buckle. And I actually don't like the metal keeper or the buckle. The, the keeper pinches me and look how scratched up it is. Like for them saying that the whole premise of the soft front is to protect equipment, this metal keeper does not protect equipment and, and it pinches my wrist and it could potentially, I mean, if you were, you know, an EMT or a paramedic, I mean, it, it's hard to say, but it, but it might, you know, pinch a patient if you were doing a move, who knows? I mean, that's just conjecture, but it probably wouldn't be a problem. But if, they, if they're adding the, the soft uh, face, it's, it's a surprise to me that they didn't also have the plastic keeper like they have on the Mudman, which which I like. I like this a lot more. And you can see that that the Mudman has these these uh, screws that stick out. A little bit proud of of this beveled edge, and and I have scratched stuff up with it. You know, fortunately, it's just you know oil field equipment. It doesn't matter, but. Uh, it, it, it was a problem, and then I read that article about why this is soft, and it is really soft. Look how pliable the bezel is. What is that going to be a problem with like mud getting behind there? I don't know. We shall see. So I would rate the physical attributes of this watch favorably. Okay, I'm talking about the fit. You know, I have an eight and a half inch wrist, and so it, I have uh, holes to spare. So if you are a big wrister. Should be no problem. If you are an ultra big wrister, you know, uh, I would guess that this would, you could probably go up to like eight and three quarters, maybe nine inches. And you do want to cinch it down tough if the heart rate monitor is something that you are interested in. It needs, it needs a nice tight connection. So the, the comfort level is not as good as the GBDH 2000. This, the comfort level of the GBH 2000 is amazing. All right. Very, very flexible band. Really good as a, as a fitness watch. And like I said, I hesitated to bring it out in the oil field, which is why I got a whole separate watch for work, the Mudman. And this is two watches in one. Now, the toughness of the Range Man it comes at a sacrifice. A little bit of the, of the, of the fit is not nearly as comfortable as a GBH 2000. But... You have no worries wearing this thing. It's, I'm not trying to say that the Drange Man is uncomfortable at all, uh, but but I do when I wear it, I do get the imprint of of this band. It does leave an imprint, and the sweat management in the GBH 2000 was amazing. Like all the sweat just ran off of my wrist, and this is a little more stifling, but not as stifling as as like some of these watches. Like these two are, are pretty stifling. All right. So now I would, I, like I said, I would rate the physical attributes very highly. And unfortunately, the software has 
some problems that some of some of them really infuriate me. And I'm really sad to see that they have not updated these problems in. <sighs> OK, so let's just start with a stopwatch. This is the Mudman. This is the stopwatch. Let me get my pointer pen, which is the metal readiness pen by right in the rain. I started the stopwatch a couple months ago and it's been running. It went all the way up to 999 hours. And then when it got to 1000 hours, it rolled over and started all over again. And, and when it rolled over about 534 hours ago, it's a thousand hours on the stopwatch. And then when you go to the timer, I think the timer is 24 hours. I can't remember, but this, this module inside the, the, the range man is the same module that's inside this GBH 2000, essentially. I mean, there's a few different features, but it's like the same insides, the same, same guts, okay? And there were some problems with the GBH 2000, which I made really clear on my YouTube videos. And Casio has not updated them for, for uh, this watch, okay? So let me just go over here to the stopwatch. Just to show you, the stopwatch does not display fractions of a second. It doesn't display tenths of a second like, like the Mudman does. See the tenths of a second rolling right there? And then other watches, just regular watches, like this watch is just uh, uh, the WS1700. Let me just get this. Oh, the stopwatch is already rolling. See those hundredths of a second going crazy up there? The, 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 this this range man has this problem. It, it doesn't have fractions of a second. And a lot of people come in the comments and they tell me the reason that Casio says that there's no fractions of a second. Because this type of display, which is an MIP display, doesn't refresh fast enough to display the fractions of a second like an LCD would. Okay, that's fine. But the watch should still calculate the, the fractions of a second. So when you stop the stopwatch, it will display it, will display it then. Okay, it could still calculate tenths and one hundredths of a second. And the fact that it can't display it while the stopwatch is running, that's fine. All right. And there's some other type of navigational problems with the software. Like, for example, the stopwatch is running. Now, if you want to press back to back out of the stopwatch and go back to the main time, well, it makes a split. You have to long press back. So as soon as you press back, it splits It splits the time, all right? And then another problem is that the timer doesn't doesn't go up. I forget what it, what it oh, it's a, it's, a, it's a one hour timer, 60 minutes. That's the max you get on this timer, all right? That's a problem. And, uh, Another problem is that uh, the uh, compass has like the tiniest little uh, arrow to point north. It's not like really clear that that this that this arrow points north. You know, obviously you, you you'd expect it to, and it does. And and the num the numbers are your bearing, you know, whichever way the watch is pointing, but it's not really clear. Okay. So just, just for comparison's sake, this is, you know, an older technology in this Mudman. Let me just go to the compass by pressing the dedicated compass button. Oops, I split the time. Let me uh, go back to the main time to go to the compass. All right. So this compass on the Mudman, there's three rays that point north and the single rays point east, south, and west. And the number is is your bearing, which, whichever way the watch is pointing. Okay, at the twelve o'clock position of the watch. And so this is a less advanced watch. It's easier to find north. All right, but I don't want to turn this whole review into a great video. I just suffice to say that that they have not updated the software yet from the GBDH two thousand, and it's it's kind of like this is like the, the like the whole fallacy of updatable software is that is that you know companies will push push a product out the door with software that's half baked and be like oh we'll get it in the update and it, that may never happen okay 
back in the day when engineers had to make their their uh, you know their logic circuits with integrated circuits on on uh, PC boards, they thought it through a lot better. And so my main gripes with the Range Man have more to do with basic watch functions than with highfalutin type of fitness functions that the Range Man lacks. Okay, if you want to compare feature for feature the GPR H1000 to a Garmin fitness watch, the Range Man's going to lose. All right, this doesn't have all the bells and whistles that a Garmin has or any other fitness watch. It just has really, it's just really tough. It's really durable. It will tell you your heart rate and and you can record your workouts. You have all these workouts you can do, like swimming, walking, trekking. And trekking is a new one that's not on the GBDH2000. All right. And uh, you can connect it to your watch or not. Or excuse me, you can connect it to your phone or not. Okay. I have not even connected this to my phone yet. I have not turned on the Bluetooth. I have not connected it to the app and uh, it's working fine. Okay. Almost all the functions work perfectly fine without ever hooking it up to your watch even once. And I have not even hooked it up to my watch. And just to show you some different things. I mean, obviously you're not going to get notifications without Bluetooth, but the stopwatch and timer work fine. The world time, you know, obviously that works fine. It's a basic watch function. The activity log, I'm working out and I do these workouts and I save them. Eventually that activity log would fill up uh, if you if you don't like purge the memory on the app, but you can go through and manually delete it. The nightly recharge, it says my nightly recharge is okay. So without ever hooking it up to the to the phone, it's still monitoring my sleep and giving me some rudimentary metrics about my sleep. So if you wanted more detailed information about your sleep, at that point, you'd have to use Bluetooth. Life log, this is just a step counter. And a lot of people want to know about the accuracy of like the step counter and the heart rate monitor. And I have not been able to do a test of the accuracy of the step, step counter. That is forthcoming, so stay tuned for that one. And what else do we have? Cardio status. This is some detraining. All right. And then breathing exercise. So all these things are working all right without Bluetooth. And you can, I think you can still set the, the uh, parameters for the tide graph. Right? Yeah, you don't need the phone for that, as far as I know. Almanac, sunrise and sunset, as well as moon phase. Okay? By the way, WS1700 has a moon phase. It's pretty cool. This is... Uh, $35, $35, I think. $35 and change is what I paid for this. And this was $500. The range man's $500. Uh, what else? Barometer. The barometer is off. I think I need to calibrate it. I'm hoping I do. Uh, so obviously I've not re uh, gone through and tested every single thing on this new GPR H1000. This review is just what I've experienced with this watch to this point. And the altimeter, same thing. It's it's not giving me the correct reading. I think I need to calibrate it. The compass, we already looked at that. Heart rate monitor. All right. So it will uh, use this optical sensor to detect your heart rate and give you a reading for your heart rate. And these fitness watches that I've used, I have the, the GBH2000. I also got the DWH5600. My wife, Denise, is using that one now. And now I have this fitness watch, which is the GPRH1000. I've lost weight. I am really happy to say that, you know, it's like 300 pounds when I started wearing this. I'm down to 280, so I've lost 20 pounds. It has helped. It has helped me, okay? And, uh, you know, that's it's my goal. I mean, I'm not, I'm, not a, I'm not like Chase the Summit where I'm like, uh, you know, an ultra marathon type of guy, really in shape. I'm just a middle-aged guy trying to get back into shape, okay? Now, uh, the interface, like the navigation, is 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 a little... It can be a little cumbersome because if you're setting parameters with the watch, like let me just give you an example. It, it, it's the, the way that the buttons work, 
like with the module is kind of annoying. Like, let me just go to uh, physical settings, which is my my attributes. Okay, so see my weight. I have 288. Well, I've lost weight. Okay, well, let me just set it. Okay, so you press this button for forward and this button for reverse. But you have to press the button once for each number, each integer. You can't set the digits, okay? Now, obviously, with if you connect it to the app, it has like uh, that, that little scroll wheel that you just flick your thumb. But still, it will still be doing each integer. It would be so much smarter if you could set each digit because this watch came preset at as the weight being 150 pounds. So to get it up to 300 pounds, I had to press this forward button 150 times. And then I remembered I actually lost weight. I don't, I don't weigh 300 anymore. So then I had to press the reverse 20 times, right? So down to 280. There you go. All right. And uh, so the this watch, I think that, that a lot of you guys are going to like it, okay? And there's so much more to say about it. This is just a review to this point. I still have more tests to do with a battery. So let me, the battery life is, is I'm, just, I'm just like, there's so much to say about it, right? And uh and obviously, I'm gonna have to we're gonna have to make more videos about it. But just in general, I really like it, and I think a lot of you guys will like this Range Man. The battery life is 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 pretty good. It's so far it's 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 clocking that that or my measurements is that the battery life is better than a GBH 2000. Okay, so it, like the the solar panels look a little bit different, look updated, and. Uh, and you do have to charge it if you're going to be using the heart rate monitor and if you're going to be using the uh, the GPS. So when you go to a workout and you go to the GPS or you, some workouts have used the GPS and some don't. Okay, so let me just try trekking. It says, please wait. And, and now it's going to start up the GPS. Okay, that takes a lot of energy. So eventually you're going to have to charge it up. Okay, and this is the big beefy charger. That, that clips on to the GBDH2000. There's connections in the back. All right. And, and you'd plug it in and would charge up. Okay. Now, if you use the GPS a lot and use the heart rate monitor all the time, you know, you may only get about a week of battery life before you need to charge it up again. All right. Now, if you're judicious about how often you use the GPS or heart rate monitor, you could get several weeks of charge out of out of the uh, range man and if you just use the watch you could get months okay that's with the solar charging so you have to be going outside and getting solar charging all right and I'll, I'll make a whole separate video about the battery life but if you know if you're coming from like uh you know a, a smart watch you'll probably be happy that you don't have to charge it that much and if you're coming from you know if, like a regular G-Shock that you never have to charge, you may not like the idea of having to charge your, your G-Shock. But I, I think that if you were to just use the Range Man as a basic watch and you got a lot of sun, you might, you might get away with never having to charge it. I'm still testing that, okay? Because, like I said, this module is the same module that comes from the GBDH2000. And just telling time... It, you, like the the sun could charge it up, but the ABC sensors, which is the altimeter, barometer, and compass, that could that like sometimes the sun couldn't keep up, right, and it would drain the battery. So we're gonna we're gonna run some more battery tests on the range man, and uh, as far as the stars go, you know, like just the the whole the whole body of the watch. Just the physical watch, I'd give five stars. I mean, it's even though it's big, it's it's light, and it fits under your sleeve, and it's comfortable. It doesn't it doesn't feel stifling or big or heavy like some other big watches, uh, and and it's not cumbersome at all. I mean, it's it's big, so uh, you're gonna have you're gonna have some might have some problems with it just being big, but. Uh, I think it's a great design. I really, I really like the physical design, 
It's just that it loses it loses a little bit of of these nagging problems in the software that it's just the basic stuff, you know, that that the uh, that the timer only goes up to 60 minutes and that and that the stopwatch doesn't doesn't uh, do fractions of a second. And it's kind of tough to get one screen that will show you the time and the heart rate, like each in big numbers. If you connect it to the app and, and you customize some of the watch faces like like I did on this one, you can get it that that here's the time and there's my heart rate. But look how small the heart rate is. OK, now the DWH 5600 had a watch face that had the time and the heart rate in big numbers. So I, I would love to see the software updated that it did basic watch functions better. And so it's going to lose a little bit on my star rating based on the fact that that G-Shock hasn't hasn't addressed those issues. OK. And, I, you know, I'm, I'll make a whole nother video just outlining really succinctly the problem so that they can turn it into a punch list and update it. OK, but it's going to lose. It's going to lose a few few of the uh, rays of the star. Uh, I would I would put this at, uh, at let me just give it a four point two stars, okay? And on Amazon, I would say five stars because there's a lot of star inflation on Amazon. It's five stars, so I would recommend it if you're interested in it at all. There's some guys that really love it, and I do like it a lot uh, for as long as I've been wearing it. But if they if they just update the software, get the basics done better than yeah full five stars okay and uh so my favorite watch is still the mud man if uh if i had to choose one it would be the mud man but uh i've been wearing this one and i really like it some of you guys are going to also really like it and i'll just leave a link below if you're interested in buying it you can buy it right from g-shock gshock.com all right and I'll, I'll put a link down there Gentlemen, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through him. I'm Jim Kincaid. Thanks for watching.